Tenaku, Mr. Speaker, kia ora tātou e te whare. Mr. Speaker, can I congratulate the Minister in the first part for moving to address the issues about drug driving, if you like. So it's long been due. So good on you for, good on him for for moving in this direction. Mr. Speaker, the Māori Party has sort of got two uh, two concerns which I've addressed uh, with the Minister's uh, uh, officials uh, which have been um, important to us. Uh, they're basically around one, informed consent, and secondly around the prohibition of storage and analysis of the blood samples. Um, and if I can take the second one first, the prohibition on the, the storage and analysis of, of blood samples, I, I was thankful to the um, information that I got from uh, the Minister's officials that sort of gave me some background to it. It's sort of when something like this, that blood samples are taken from drivers for, for prosecutions under the Land Transport Act, the samples are split in two. Uh, sample A is initially uh, tested by ESA for the presence of alcohol and or controlled and prescription drugs. If positive, the samples will be stored securely for 12 months for the purposes of appeal. That's all pretty logical. If a driver wishes to appeal the result of the blood test and an unopened B sample is provided uh, to the testing facility uh, of the driver's choice and tested accordingly. After 12 months, all samples are, are securely disposed of. Very good. But the key for us um, on this particular bill, uh, Mr Chair, is that occasionally research, um, it says that ba basically, uh, occasionally research will be conducted on the alcohol drug profile of convicted drivers and if this occurs, then a random sample will be taken from the available blood stocks, uh, that is, those who have been uh, convicted in the last 12 months. Okay, and I've had it confirmed from the officials that uh, even those examples that are used for profiling will only be kept for 12 months. Uh, that's, that's pretty good. This research is only conducted by ESR. Samples are not allowed out of ESR facilities for security and biohazard reasons. Fine and such research is conducted anonymously and no identifying information is collated uh, during the research. Now that's all, all pretty good, but uh, in the end, the key um, aspect for us was about this whole storage, I think, has been covered because, uh, in a sense, it's, it's supposedly, we'll just take the word for it, that it's all going to be locked up and secure, and from the Māori Party's perspective, it's all about retention of that information about Whakapapa and making sure that there's no tampering with that uh, particular information. But... The, um, the second issue is about, I suppose, the ethics of the use of those samples for research. Now, uh, I, I understand that it's widely accepted that there are ethical protocols around the use of samples for research. And as the bill talks, uh, uh, states, occasionally samples can be used for research. And I suppose what we're trying to angle at is this notion of informed consent. So how can that be dealt with, knowing full well that the samples will be disposed of in 12, in 12 months? I suppose it's asking for consideration uh, in this particular bill that a, a practice be established around informed consent. Now, I understand that if somebody's in a car accident um, and samples need to be taken, that at that point in time, informed consent is uh, a part of the, the protocols that are required. Um, in terms of the retention of blood samples. And if, having set that precedent, I suppose I'm just asking the Minister to consider if this is a possibility of looking and considering with the ethical considerations around informed consent, whether it would not be possible right from the very start to have a set process around informed consent for the use of research, if we're even going to head down that way. But at the moment, it's sort of the doors wide open about how uh, blood samples can be used in terms of research, and uh, from the Māori Party's perspective, we're keen to sort of plug that gap. For the purposes that line, basically, in my speech yesterday about uh, whakapapa being very important, uh, the retention of those, uh, the fact that those samples are destroyed takes care of one line, and no tampering with the samples uh, is also under lock and key. Those sorts of issues are dealt with. Uh, but our major issue, as I say, is this whole question about, um, is about uh, the protocols around research. Um, and in one sense, section 209A in the bill before us breaches this fundamental principle. And it's on that, uh, that basis that we hope that uh, some consideration uh, would be given by the members of this House around that particular provision. Uh, so I'll leave it at that, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chair, and, and hope for a response at some point by the Minister. Chair.